Good evening, my name is Garrett and welcome to The Last Call. Tonight's final drink is from Yellowstone. This is their single malt whiskey coming in at a 54% ABV for your age statement. So here in 2023, the spike in single malt whiskeys here in the United States is booming great. I love a lot of single malts. I'm a big Scotch fan, so seeing the United States finally embrace what single malts can do is awesome. So a couple things we do know about this. Again, it's 100% malted barley, and this is distilled and aged in Indiana. So it could be MGP, definitely a possibility. Uh, but that's what Yellowstone's known for. They source usually from MGP or some other places and rebottle it for themselves. So I'm really curious on how well this is going to go across because this is a newer release for them here in 2023. So as always, we're going to be trying it two different ways. First way, neat, no ice, no water. Second way, we'll add just a drop of water, see if anything changes up. And as always, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hang around for a bit. Uh, if you do enjoy single malts, I will be linking some of their other bottles up above and down below, so you can check out after this video. Now, I haven't had actually the standard I really haven't tried any other Yellowstone bottles. They've always been on my list to get, but I really just have been buying other things. But seeing that this showed up on the market, I was like, man, again, being a single malt fan that I am, I'm really hoping this does well. Beautiful dark golden color there. Uh, Town Branch does a seven year single malt, and I love that one. All right, let's go for notes. Oh yeah, that is barley. Barley forward, very grain cereal note. Wow, it's got a barley funk to it. A little bit of honey in there. There is a fruit sweetness going on too that I, I can't put my finger on yet. But definitely this is, it almost reminds me of like granola breakfast cereal with a ladle of honey over it because it's very grain forward. And if you're not a big fan of grain forward, this may or may not be for you, but that barley is really strong here. Very grain forward, very grain sweet and dusty. And that honey is going on in there too. It's almost, again, almost reminds me of a granola. So, all right, let's go for taste. Ooh. That is different. Very floral, almost potpourri. It's got a good warmth to it. Again, it's 54%, but it's warm. The barley is definitely showcased here pretty well. Peach and pears? Am I getting peach and pear? There's a waxiness going on. There's definitely peach and pear. Very fruity. Uh, but definitely, you're, you're right down the middle. You're getting green sweetness with honey over here and big old bowl of peaches and pears and fruit notes here. It's breakfast in a glass. Like if you wanted a rustic breakfast, that's what this tastes like. Granola and freshly sliced fruit. That's what this glass is. It's not bad. Uh, I, if anything, I think maybe age it a little bit longer than four years if I had a criticism. I think it'll round out some of those notes because it is very distinct in what it's trying to be right now which is not a bad thing. I appreciate that. One more sip. We're gonna try to see what the finish is like here. I'm actually really liking the beginning of this one. Big burst of fruit and that grain sweetness is in there. Here in the finish, you are getting that uh, bit of oak. Spices, I would definitely say like a sweet cinnamon. Dusty cinnamon, I'll take it back. Not sweet cinnamon, more like baking cinnamon, kind of a uh, just a more robust, granulated cinnamon like you took a cinnamon stick and grated it up it's interesting it's not going to be for everybody there is just a bit of youth in there and i think it's just because single malts tend to like it better the longer you age them from what i can tell if this is your first single malt this is going to take you for a ride and again going at the high abv that really surprises me all right let's add a little dash of water see what changes up But since it just hit the market, especially here in Indiana, I was like, I have to get it. I want to get it out as soon as I can to inform you about it here as well. All right, 
Let's go for notes on the water version. Oh, that's nice. It actually tames back a bit of that grain barley forward note. Brings out a little bit more fruit sweetness on the nose. Yeah. This has so much barley forward on the nose that if you're not used to it, I think that just a, at least on the nose, that little drop of water really changes things up in a positive way. Definitely. I really like that nose. Not that there's anything wrong with this one, but the, the grain forward is t dominating this glass. We hear it's more sweet. I like that. All right, let's go for taste. The fruit sweetness showed up more even there. Mm, almost just a big bowl of fruit. You still get a bit of the grain in there. You still get a bit of the barley going on. Those aren't bad. Those are just obvious notes. But the fruit sweetness is really jumping out. Almost getting like a tart cherry in there. Definitely get the peach, the pear, uh, apple even. A little bit of honey sweetness too. And in the finish, getting that still nice solid oak and a bit of spice. Wow. If anything, I would say maybe it goes a little warmer because that little drop of water aggravated it just a little bit. So the ABV does bite back a little bit more on there. But let's go back to the neat version. Stay here. Very similar, but this goes sweeter. This still brings across that grain barley sweetness where this is dominating in those fruit notes. As always, it doesn't matter what you drink or how you drink it, as long as you enjoy it. This is an interesting bottle because that little drop of water really changed up, in my opinion, kind of for the better. But nonetheless, let's talk about market price because we all know market price is market price and it's always going to vary. So I ended up picking this up for 45 bucks at Total Wine here in Indiana. And most places are selling it like 48 to $50 right now. Single malts are kind of pulling a higher price point from what it seems. But I'll be honest, I might have to put an AB comparison between this and the Town Branch single malt. I think I like that one better. And that one's even cheaper. Yeah, that one's like 30, less than $35. I think it was like 32, $33. This isn't bad. Don't, I'm not gonna criticize it that much. But I think 50 bucks for it is kind of high. If this was like always 45 and I picked it up for 40, we'd probably be talking about a different kind of situation here. I think the notes it's bringing across are really solid. I think the price is maybe a little high. And again, from what it seems, Yellowstone tends to pull a higher price point for some reason. Because even their bourbon's like 40 bucks, 40 to 50 bucks or something crazy like that, depending on your market. But I don't think it's bad. If you're new to single malts, I don't know if I'd recommend starting off on this one. There are some other ones I'd probably recommend. Again, they'll be linked up above and down below. I don't think it's bad, though. But I do think that uh, Yellowstone here probably has a larger distribution area than something like Town Branch. So you'll probably be able to find this more often or in more areas. But I don't think it's bad. Just go in there with an open mind. If you're not used to grain, sweet, barley stuff, it may or may not be for you. But definitely, if you get an option to try it, give it a try beforehand. But I think it's okay. I just wish that price was a little bit lower on it, personally. So yeah, there you have it, folks. Yellowstone Single Malt Whiskey. If you have any questions about the bottle itself, let me know down in the comment section below. I will do my best to answer it. And if you have any specific spirit I should go looking for, also let me know down below. Love doing these reviews and sharing with you the experience at home. And as always, may your last trick of the night. Be the best one.